You're out capturing wildlife images with your long telephoto lens and you come upon a small subject that you want to photograph. In my case, it was a beautiful and deadly mangrove pit viper. Unfortunately, I didn't have other lenses with me that I could use to get closer to the snake, but I did have a 2 times teleconverter and a set of extension tubes. I thought I could try them both out and see which one worked best. Let's start with my lens. It is a Nikon 600mm f4 FL lens that has a minimum focusing distance of 4.4 meters or 14.4 feet. At that distance, my maximum reproduction ratio is 0.14. That means if something is 10 centimeters long in real life, it will be 1.4 centimeters long on my camera sensor. So I started by getting as close as I could to the Viper and focusing. A tripod is an absolute must here, and I was using my Manfrotto carbon fiber tripod with a generation one Wimberley head. It helped me keep steady when finding my subject and made it way easier to make small adjustments to my composition. The biggest tip that I would share is to use manual focus. Autofocus right at the minimum limit is not going to work well. What really worked well was to use live view on my camera and zoom in on my subject to get the critical focus. To capture a more magnified image, my first option was to use a 2 times teleconverter. The great thing about this is that I have the same minimum focusing distance. That minimum focusing distance is still at 4.4 meters, so I didn't have to move my tripod and camera. A 2 times teleconverter will double my maximum reproduction ratio from 0.14 to 0.28. So, something that is 10 centimeters long in real life will now be 2.8 centimeters long on my camera sensor. There are a few things to know about teleconverters. First of all, they not only double your focal length and reproduction ratio, but they also double your minimum aperture. So my effective minimum aperture is no longer f4, it is f8. In addition to this, because they have glass in them, they can degrade your image. They can magnify any imperfections or distortions. When choosing a teleconverter, you want to get the best quality one that you can. It is worth noting that not all lenses can use teleconverters, so you should make sure that they work with your lens. A great thing about teleconverters is that you can still focus on subjects that are further away in the distance. So here's an image of that mangrove pit viper at the minimum focusing distance of 4.4 meters and one with the two times teleconverter. So you can see that I have doubled my magnification with the teleconverter. The second option is a set of extension tubes. Like a teleconverter, extension tubes go between your camera and lens. Unlike a teleconverter, they don't have any glass in them. The extension tube set I have is made by Kenko and it consists of 12 millimeter, 20 millimeter and 36 millimeter extension tubes. And they can be stacked together to create a total of 68 millimeters of extension. They extend your camera away from your lens and allow you to decrease the minimum focusing distance of your lens. This allows you to get physically closer to your subject and therefore get a more magnified image. But because the light has to travel further to get to your camera sensor, it will also mean that you need longer exposure times. There isn't glass, but they can have some vignetting. Be aware that extension tubes don't work with all lenses and when you have an extension tube attached, you won't be able to focus to infinity. Now the amount of magnification you get with the extension tubes depends on a number of factors, including the specific lens you are using, its minimum focusing distance, and the size and number of tubes you are using. A generic formula to figure out how much more magnification you can get is the amount of extension divided by the focal length and then add that to the lens's maximum magnification. You will just need to look up the specifications for your lens to find its maximum magnification. So in my case, I have 68 millimeters of extension divided by my lens focal length, which is 600 millimeters. This equals 0.11. So I add that to my lens's maximum magnification, which is 0.14, to give me a new maximum magnification of 0.25. This formula will get you an approximate amount of magnification with extension tubes. To get more exact numbers, you'll need to take into account minimum focusing distance of your lens and to use an additional formula. But all that mathematics is for a different video. Just be aware that different lenses of the same focal length can give you different results when it comes to extension tubes. 
It depends on the optical design of your lens. So with extension tubes on my 600 millimeter f4 lens i have a new maximum reproduction ratio of 0.25 and i have a new minimum focusing distance of 2.87 meters or 9.5 feet the math for calculating the minimum focusing distance is probably also best saved for another video so here's an image of the mangrove pit viper captured with extension tubes just a reminder compare that to the one without extension tubes you will notice a few things about the extension tube image. There was a slight change in the angle as I had to move the camera, so you'll see more light patches in the background under the snake. You can also see the vignetting in the corners of the frame, where they're darker than the rest of the image. And this can happen with extension tubes. Now, with both the teleconverter and the extension tubes, I used a cable release self timer and even the mirror up function because I was using my Nikon D850 DSLR camera and not one of my mirrorless cameras so the mirror flipping up in the camera can cause vibration especially at slower shutter speeds one of the things that actually worked really well was using the vibration reduction on my lens I actually think it gave me my sharpest images compared to the self timer and mirror up options the teleconverter gave my 600 millimeter f4 lens a 0.28 times magnification and the extension tubes gave me a 0.25 times magnification. They were pretty close, so which did I prefer? You know, at the end of the day, the most important thing is the quality of the image. So let's take a closer look at some images. As a reminder, here's the image of the Viper captured at minimum focusing distance of my lens. Nothing else is attached. And here we have a two times teleconverter. If we zoom in on this picture around 200%, we can see the beautiful details of this Viper. The image is sharp and it looks pretty good. I captured this image at an aperture of F8. Here's another image captured with a teleconverter. Zoomed in and this one is stopped down to F18. So there's a more depth of field. Just look at those details and how great the snake's skin looks. I can almost feel the spiky texture on the skin of its head. Now let's look at the image captured with extension tubes. There were some light patches in the background, remember that. And you can see the vignetting that I previously mentioned. So let's zoom in around 200% and take a closer look. This was also captured at F8. Now to my eye, it doesn't seem like it is quite as sharp, even the parts that are supposed to be in focus. Also, when I look at the snake, there seems to be some weird fringing around the edge. Some of the other images I captured had some even worse fringing when there was light in the background. Here's an example of that, but it's probably just because of this really bright background. However, the snake seems a bit sharper here. And here's another image. It was definitely more difficult to get sharper images with the extension tubes than with the teleconverter. Here is a side-by-side -side of the two images captured with the extension tubes and with the two times teleconverter, both captured at f8. I know the angle is slightly different, but I definitely prefer the teleconverter. Which one do you prefer? One other thing to mention is that I also sometimes had some communication problems between my extension tubes and my camera. Sometimes the aperture couldn't be read and other times there was some overexposure, which I had to adjust for, but it was frustrating. So if you have any other recommendations for great extension tubes, I'd love to hear about them. I hope you liked my comparison. If you enjoy the content I'm creating, please consider subscribing. Thanks very much.